365 days ago, I put the finishing touches on this poison dart frog ecosystem. The transformation has been intense and the experience has been very rewarding. It all started a year ago with an empty terrarium, a small water pump, and a plan. I created a housing for the water pump as well as a drainage layer using aquarium divider grid and filter foam. I'll link the materials used in the description and I recommend checking out my full poison dart frog build guide if you want to emulate this process. Once I had my false bottom complete, I worked on building out my water feature using more aquarium divider grid and trenches in the filter foam for the water collection later on. The divider grid and filter foam will allow any water from misting or from my water feature to seep through the bottom and cycle back through to the pump. Once I was sure about my rock formation, I secured it using aquarium safe silicone. Speaking of aquarium safe silicone, I also used it to score all of the glass where the expanding foam would later on be going. This is an important step to ensure that the expanding foam adheres to the glass. I used the Great Stuff Pond and Stone Expanding Foam for obvious reasons as it's pond safe and therefore aquarium safe. You do need to make sure that you let it properly cure and gas off. I always give my terrariums a solid two to three weeks before adding any sort of plants or animal life. Expanding foam, in my opinion, is the most valuable player when it comes to terrarium building materials. This is the part of the terrarium building process when your project really starts to come to life and everything gets tied together. You can also add things to the expanding foam before it's finished curing, such as cork bark. After 24 hours, the foam will have cured and finished expanding and you can start to get to work with the razor blade to shave off the shiny bits. This is an important part of the terrarium building process as nothing will adhere to the foam if you don't take the shiny bit off. Once the tedious work of removing the shiny bits of the expanding foam is finished, you'll coat it with aquarium safe silicone and a mixture of cocoa peat and sphagnum moss. You'll also want to add some leaf litter. I prefer oak leaves for look and for the smell and this is an important feature of the terrarium as that's where your microbial life will flourish. You'll want to make sure that your terrarium is fully gassed off and I can't stress this enough about three to four weeks before it stops smelling like silicone before you can start to add plants and animals. A product that I highly recommend is the Wet Moss Mix from FrogDaddy.net. It allows you to coat the entire backdrop of your terrarium with a mixture of over 14 different types of mosses and micro ferns. This is an advantage because it allows the most optimal type of moss or plant to grow in the best micro conditions of your terrarium, ensuring that your maintenance is minimum, but the look is maximum. I gave all of my plant trimmings a solid three weeks to take root and for all my microbial life to establish itself before adding my poison dart frogs. I got a pair of Tinctorious Azarus poison dart frogs and I later on adopted a third. So now there's a trio of them. This is about the maximum amount of frogs that you want to put in a terrarium this size. And you also want to make sure you monitor their behavior because they can sometimes become territorial. In the leaf litter is the secret that keeps this bioactive terrarium clean. It's the cleanup crew. It consists of pill bugs as well as springtails. Speaking of springtails, I have a whole colony of them that I use to supplement the poison dart frogs diet as well as the survivors stay and help add to the cleanup crew. Although my dart frogs really seem to love eating springtails, there's really not enough substance there. The main portion of their diet consists of flightless fruit flies. I know that sounds ridiculous, but they are actually flies, but selective breeding as well as genetic mutations has resulted in a species of flies that no longer flies. I dust them down with calcium and about once every two weeks with Rapashi Super Pig and a vitamin A supplement. Feeding poison dart frogs is definitely one of the highlights of the hobby. I know it's hard to tell, but they're actually catching them with their tongues. They're just moving at a very quick pace. Another thing that's very unique about dart frogs is a thing called toe tapping, which they will do to try to lure out bugs out of the leaf litter, similar to the way that a woodpecker does with vibrations. Dart frogs also can absorb nutrients through their skin, so I supplement that with a clay mineral bath that I also get from frogdaddy.net. 
Since I have the perfect little depression in my jungle floor via this little stone, that's where I put the clay bath so it gives it a nice naturalistic look. And every time I put it in there, the frogs love to come and hang out. I usually throw a few flies next to it to encourage them to hang out. And who doesn't want a nice little snack during their spa day? I always think it's interesting how their shiny skin contrasts with the clay. One thing that I also want to clear up is that poison dart frogs are only poisonous in nature. They get their toxins from the insects that they eat, who get their toxins from the plants that they eat. So these guys are technically harmless. Like, comment, and subscribe, and check out my other content.